Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Magic the Gathering Arbitrage. And this was a issue, um, again, Dan and I talk a lot. Bobby and I talk, I talk Kevin, like everyone talks. As long as you like email me, I will talk to you. Maybe not on the same day, but relatively quickly. Eric as well. So yeah, Arbitrage is when you can take a product and you can buy it one price and then you can sell it at a higher price. So Dan did this, uh, Patreon Dan, who's Rhino deck you've seen, and it has worked for him uh, personally. He's during Christmas time. A lot of people were selling the San Diego Comic Con exclusive uh, sets for a price lower than the price he could get at buy list, and definitely lower than the price he could get at buy list plus the store credit. So his store is Channel Fireball, uh, one of the best stores in my opinion. I like Channel Fireball. I like that they are very a player friendly and they have some of the best players if not the best players in magic and they support them and which is immensely important uh in my opinion for the game to grow so again i don't promote people i don't get free product i don't do sponsored videos and i will only promote you if i actually buy your products and i buy into what you're selling me and china fireball in my opinion is very very good as a store so what he did was he purchased all these San Diego Comic Con kits. I don't know how many, but I'm assuming like five, six, maybe more. And then he split them. He opened the boxes and they come with a book. So he actually sent me three copies of the book. I have two sealed. I'm going to probably give one of them away in a different contest. I've been a little contest light as of late, uh, mainly because the shipping schedule has been a little off because I tried to ship them when I shipped the Patreon stuff. That way I don't need to go to the post office twice. No one really wants to go to the post office even once, but I definitely don't want to go twice, especially the post office. I normally go to is not the greatest or the best place for a customer uh, service, if you will. But that's another topic altogether. Anyway, I'll probably send one of those off to you guys. They are sealed. I have two sealed copies. And what he did was he traded them in for store credit at China Fireball and he had more store credit than cost him, which is great for him because he's, he's going to buy cases and packs anyway. So it's not a loss for him at his local store. Arbitrage is real and it is possible. You just have to get rid of the card as soon as it comes in before the price, the buy list price changes any. The definition would be in magic terms would be if you saw something anywhere and you knew that as soon as you got it, you could sell it for more than you purchased it for, then at that point you buy every single copy that exists. Because what you're doing is you're guaranteeing yourself a profit. But a lot of times what happens is with a single card, not like a San Diego Comic Con like package because the cards go up and down together. By the time they come to you, the buy list price is already increased because there's less copies of it, right? In the marketplace. Because by definition, the package is coming to you. And what I've seen a lot of times happen is on your way to you, the buy list price jumps in price. And one, it only takes one store with one good price for you to do arbitrage. It takes a lot of work. So that's one of my core philosophies about like MTG Finance is you do it not to make money because you will never make a cent from it. You do it because you have fun. It's fun picking Malera. It's fun picking Voice. It's fun seeing cards I love go up in price. And before you say, oh, you're making it go up in price because you're buying it. No one, not a single person has the buying power of any store. Star City Games can buy hundreds of copies of you know, a fetch land and not give a shit. But I, me as an individual, I need to buy them like slowly and steadily. And I, the only card I have more than like a hundred copies of is probably Falia. I want Punishing Fire. The only card over a dollar I have over a hundred copies of. And it's because I would never sell that card. I just like the card. I like how it looks. I like how the decks I play with her, her play style where I don't like spells essentially I, I really don't like counter spell decks i don't like playing against them i don't like playing with them so for her i think it's very good and the coco deck i like combo decks so malera is also very good and voices is overall 
a card I have put pretty much my reputation based on from the pre-order till now, that card has only been bank. Uh, obviously, uh, Dragon Maze, <laughs> my favorite set. No surprise that Voice of Resurgence would be one of my top favorite five cards. So, Arbitrage, very interesting. It's fun to do because you feel like it's kind of gambling, but you, you're kind of ahead of the house. But it's not something that you can make a living from. So MTG Finance, in my opinion, is something that you can have fun with, and it is fun. It's a ton of fun. But it's not something that like I would be like, hey, let's try to make money from this. Uh, as has been documented everywhere, uh, employment at a Walmart or at a Target far exceeds any money you can make per hour on Magic the Gathering Finance side. Long term. Yeah, you hear about the, oh my gosh, it got... He got rich from that buying that one collection and he sold it and wow, amazing. But at the end of the day, that's not feasible for everybody. Uh, and that's not, that's not feasible for most people, I would say. And you know, honestly, I have a lot of fun doing MTG Finance. I don't tell you guys that because a lot of you get like real mad and you know that. I treat it as a hobby within a hobby, it's just like YouTubing. It's a fun thing to do because when a malaria goes up from a dollar to five dollars, you do feel good about yourself. You're like, oh, malaria, nice. Or when Stony Silence or Voice or any of these cards that have been spiking, which have been spiking pretty hard. Olivia Vodarin, Huntmaster. I mean, Huntmaster, come on. I would have traded a Huntmaster for a Falia straight up back in the day. And I would know, I would be like, oh, cool. After rotation, of course, not when Huntmaster was like $20 card in standard. And I just couldn't stop accumulating these cards, a uh, Huntmasters, because no one wanted them. Well, people want them now. Anyway, bye guys.